Good morning, and welcome to the Art of Fire. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, so we thought we'd show you a little bit about it and also get online a minute or two early so that anybody that checks in right at 11 isn't missing anything while I figure out the camera. I'm Bruce. I'll be doing the camera work and your narration today. And this is the exterior shot of the Art of Fire. And it really is a converted dairy barn for those of you that may never have visited the facility. So we'll go on over and take a look. Uh, about uh, 24 years ago, Foster and Theta moved in here. Foster rebuilt the place himself. After all his training as a equipment manufacturer and everything else that goes with glass blowing. So here's the entry. Welcome aboard. And you don't have to worry about the comments about our neighborhood. Nobody's going to be putting on a sweater or a pair of slippers. So let's bring it on back here and we'll get the show started. So we're walking through the gallery right now. And we'll say hi to Theta over here by the computer. Good morning. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. So if you have questions later on, Theta will be able to help you out. Here's the man that built the place. Good morning, Foster. Good morning, you all. How are you today? Welcome to the Art of Fire Cane Demonstration Day. And we're, well, we're glad that you're here with us. Okay. Good and morning. here's Josh. Good morning, folks. Well, come on in. Okay. Come take a look. So, so what we're going to do today is we're going to feature cane working. And I'll come on around here to our whiteboard and show you that as part of the live demonstration today, we'll do a pull of what's called straight cane. And then after that, we'll do some twisted cane. Then Josh will use some cane to make a candy dish. Todd will use the cane in a slightly different orientation and make a mosaic rondelle. And then we'll finish up with a cane vase from Josh. So I'm sure uh, some of you may be wondering, what's the free piece this week? I certainly would be. And it's going to be one of these beautiful red cane balls. So one of those will be given away for anybody that comments. So be sure to like us, comment, and get your name in a random drawing to win this. And while we're on the subject, uh, we had a winner last week of this beautiful multicolored cat and that goes to Pamela Johnson Ritter. So congratulations Pamela. Welcome David and welcome Patrick. Okay so we've covered the order of operations here and let's just show you a little bit of what we've got going on. So right here are quite a few of our cane ornaments. We've got twisted cane, we've got some straight cane, with white cane twisted and we've got the monster which is actually like a gazing ball and that's made a little bit different we'll talk about that later good morning David Hogan from Forestville Maryland thanks for joining us Bridget Black Blakemore's back hello and I hope you're enjoying the mug you got two weeks ago we'll also have for sale today uh, pairs of cane goblets, so you can see the cane in the top of the cup there. Yeah, I started with number two, but that's because for number one, I've got to maneuver over here a little bit and get a side view of it so you can see it with the light behind it. A beautiful twisted cane. That one's actually called veiled cane. The cane is filled with clear glass instead of being surrounded. Number three, We've got a beautiful mosaic pattern of straight base. And number four is a platter or rondelle with a series of twisted cane in it that's just a complete jumble of color. We've got a white cane vase, and you can see that the patterns of the cane have been put in in opposing directions, all 90 degrees to each other. Number six back here is a uh, ruffled bowl. And I'll move right along, number seven over here. Let me get to the side a little bit on it so you can see it. This is a reticello. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Number eight is a beautiful twisted and uh, sandblasted piece. That's what gives it that frosty finish. And to finish up what we have here on display, 
a series of candy dishes, which are all for sale. The cane ornaments are $55 a piece. The large cane swirl ball, or the one I called a uh, gazing ball, is $350. Candy dishes, there's the price on them, and the cane goblets. The other pieces are priced individually because they're one of a kind, and we'll cover that later. But I think we're probably ready here to get ready with some glass work. So Josh is going to go first for us, and he's going to do a cane pull with uh, white, isn't it? Yeah, so we're actually going to be making what you see here. We're going to have a, kind of a white center with clear around it, and this will get used into some of the cane ornaments we make and some of the candy dishes. So that's okay. what we're going to start out making. Okay. So what Josh will do is take a preheated pipe, a solid one, and he'll put just a little bit of glass on it. Because over in the annealing oven, he's got a chunk of white glass, which is actually much bigger than that little piece that he just held up to show you. Hello, Susan Ledford. Welcome aboard. And Christy Halford. Thank you. Your cane ornaments stay out on display all year long. We really like that. So there's Josh with that big piece of white, and he'll melt that in here. He's heating it up in the glory hole. For those of you that haven't been with us, it's about uh, 2,300 degrees in there. It'll start melting that white, and Josh will shape it on the metal table. So when he is finished gathering over this, the diameter that he's gonna start working with is probably gonna be about eight times what that little thread, that little piece of cane is now. But by stretching it, they'll make it much thinner. It takes a few moments to heat this up, and as soon as Josh gets that ready, he'll head over to the marver, and you'll be able to see the approximate size of that white glass. Joe Marshall, thanks for joining us, appreciate it. Hey, give us some likes, share what you're seeing, by all means, comment. When you comment, your name gets entered in a random drawing for the free piece that we give away each week. So uh, don't hesitate. We love seeing those thumbs, thumbs up, some hearts flying across the screen. It all makes us feel good. So here comes Josh now, and there is what was that uh, only 900 degree white glass, and now it's up to about 2,000 degrees. He's going to roll it into a cylinder, and he's also going to roll the end of it so that it's not got sharp edges on it. So it's very important in pulling this cane to keep an even heat throughout the glass. See how the clear glass that's over the pipe is still blowing. He hasn't lost the heat. Now he'll go back in and he'll take his first gather. What will you do, Josh? About two gathers on this? Yeah, we're going to do two gathers. Okay, so there's the first one, and you can see that the white inside is still moving a little bit if Josh stops turning, okay? And that's a good thing, because he can control it, but it also tells us that the heat is throughout. If he were to let that get cold so that it wouldn't move much, then he'd have to heat the whole thing and basically start all over with heat application. So now he's back into the glory hole and heating that up. Once he's got the heat fully into this and he's got the distribution of the clear glass like he wants, he'll let it cool just a little bit and then gather again. So the uh, trick with this is before he gathers, he's got to make sure that it's a little bit cold, but he's still got heat throughout. Now you can see that the clear glass is magnifying the white in there, but you're still looking at about a half an inch of the boundary of clear glass around the white. Notice he's still got motion in it, and now he's gonna come over here and let the weight of the uh, pipe rest on the arms of the bench, give himself a little break. Yeah, so let us know if you have any of our cane pieces, maybe one of our cane ornaments, whether it's twisted or the filigrana, kind of the lattice, design. Let us know if you have one. Okay, so we can see from the motion it's starting to stabilize a little bit, but it still moves just a tad. 
And when he gets it just at the right temperature he wants, he'll go and gather. Please share what you see it. Uh, call your friends, tell them to join up with us. And if you're interested in purchasing any pieces, you can direct message Theta through Facebook or whatever platform you like. And then in addition to that, you can contact her on the website, artoffire.com. And as a last resort, call. But don't call Foster's phone because I'm using it to do the filming. Okay, so Josh has got his next gather. You can still see the motion throughout. And now, instead of having a rounded nose on this, he's going to start making a little bit blunt by pressing down. When you go in the glory hole, the piece that's furthest in, the very outboard part of that tip, gets a little bit hotter. So his goal here is to keep this hot throughout. Now, back behind him, Todd's making up the next part. This is called our post. And this is required because this cane pull is going to go, what, Josh, about 30 feet? Yeah, I'd say 30, 40 feet. 30 to 40 feet. So Todd has formed the post on the end of this pipe. And when it's time for the pull, Josh will drop the end of the piece onto that, and he and Todd will work to pull it out. Josh just dipped the uh, glass down into water just to cool the tip of it. That was the sound you heard. And so in just a moment, he's going to meet Todd over by the uh, annealers over here. We've got a series of sticks laid out on the floor to hold the cane. Here comes Josh. You'll see the cane stretch from the gathering pipe. See how it's thinner? He puts it onto the post and hands off to Todd. So like we told you, the glass at the end of the piece is the hottest, but that one, the gathering pipe, is the coldest. That's why Todd's still pointing down for a while. Notice how it thins there, and Josh has a large well of hot glass to pull from. So I'm going to walk around this way because I don't want to walk into that hot cane, but Josh just continues to move, and as he goes along, Look at the well of glass he's drawing from up here. It's still thick, which means it retains heat. And right here, it's still probably around 12 or 1300 degrees. Okay. But a little further down, it might drop down to close to 900. Okay, great. And you can see that we've got a pretty uniform diameter running all the way down. And that is simply a function of controlling the heat. And if you look back over here toward Josh, you'll see that he's got that small diameter almost all the way down to the pipe. Michael Herman's with us. Well, hello, Michael. All right, Josh is going to break it off of that pipe. There's only a little bit of waste left. And now let's go over here and take a quick look at what he got for a diameter on the very end of the piece. So he got it down really pretty thin, about the same time as the uh, same size as the piece you saw on the table. Right now he's down there breaking it apart into pieces about oh nine feet long, maybe, eh, maybe about seven. Anyway, yeah. well come on up, come take a look. Now the cane is still so hot. If I touch it with cold tools, it actually will break. So we actually grab it. I give it a tap down, it cools it, and breaks it right there. And that's how we break it up. You this makes it a little more manageable to carry around. And then we'll break it into like seven inch lengths. Now look at it right down here, and you can see all these pieces are basically the same diameter. So for a total run of about 35 to 40 feet, that's really quite good to have a uniform diameter down. Anything else you'd like to add, Josh? No, I think now we're going to pull some twisted cane. So just in a moment, after Bruce shows you some of our twisted cane, we're actually going to show you, and here's the setup. Previous, we pulled some blue straight cane. It's actually blue over white. I don't know if you can see from the end, but it's blue color over white that we pulled and made straight cane. And we're going to use this to make twisted cane. Okay, 
So, let's go on down here and review what we have today, not only for you to see, but what's for sale and what's for giveaway. So, right now they're going to do a pull of Twisted Cane. And it's not going to look exactly like the twists you see here in these ornaments or in these beautiful candy dishes, okay? What this is going to do is with four pieces of cane on opposite sides of a solid core, they will twist around the outside, much more like what you see the white in this goblet right here. David Orldorf asked, will this go in the kiln to be annealed? Actually, it doesn't need to be annealed as long as the cane is round and it's a fairly thin diameter. Uh, the thing with the uh, round glass is it's going to lose heat uniformly across its surfaces so there's not a problem of the tension being created. If we make flat cane or make some very large pieces of cane, then yes, we do have to anneal them. So Josh and Todd are going to work on twisting up and you'll see this close up on this ornament here with the four uh, with the white well that's uh, that's about 10 pieces of cane and they're all close together and twisted so they make that net looking so what they're going to do down uh, here at the other end of the studio is by picking up four on one side and four on the other it'll be kind of a, a crisscross twist but it won't be full coverage. So to review again, what we've got for you today, you've seen the straight cane pull, now we're gonna have a twisted cane pull, and there are hundreds of varieties of twisted cane. Uh, we're gonna have candy dish, mosaic rondelle, and a cane vase. So here are the candy dishes, and we made these just yesterday, and they're here for purchase. Uh, here are, well, let's run through the pieces again. Over here, if I can get the camera around, there we go. A beautiful, what's called veiled cane. And that is a, a nice vase right there. We have the cane goblets. We've got a mosaic style vase. And then a crisscross pattern with uh, straight white canes. We've got a rondelle with twisted canes. We've got a fluted bowl back here. You can see the extensive twisting on the white in that. We've got a piece over here that's got little bubbles in it. Reticello style. And number eight is one that's been sandblasted. So let's get back down here where the action is. Josh has gathered up some glass. So in this case, he wants a core to begin with. So what he's done right now is gathered, he's got one of our cherry wood blocks, and he's shaping this glass up. Will you go for another gather, Josh? Yep. We'll go for another gather and then pick up the cane. Okay. So right now he's kind of elongating. You can see that extended from the pipe, this is probably about, oh, four and a half to five inches. And if you look over here at the canes, you can't measure them, but I can tell you they're cut to about a seven inch length. So Todd is warming them with a propane torch. Marifloral, I like that, good to have you. Jennifer, nice to see you. Yes, it is a beautiful shade of blue. Patrick, we love that mosaic base too. Now go ahead and comment. Uh, let us know if you have some of our glass, how you've met us, how you got to know the art of fire. And uh, if you miss the Ren Fair as much as we do, then uh, let us know what pieces you may have picked up there. You can order pieces by direct messaging Theta through the Facebook app. You can also contact us through the website. And please be sure to comment because that's what's going to get you entered in the random drawing for a, a beautiful red ornament. So Todd has to heat those up. This is to preheat them. If we were to suddenly put all those blue canes into the glory hole and heat them up, they would just crack. So he's heating them with a torch. Josh is keeping an eye on Todd. They'll be communicating about what's going on. And Josh is monitoring the glass he has to see if it's getting too cold. 
look at the end of the iron, the pipe that he has. It's still glowing orange. He knows he's got plenty of heat in it. All right. So this, we'll get our last gather, and then we'll pick up those keys. So this fresh hot gather of glass is going to surround the core he has. He'll make sure that the shape of it is long enough to cover the canes and then he will put them on one side then the other. So here he goes, he gets his cylinder and now he comes up here and he goes straight in on one side, he lets it fall onto it and straight onto the other and now he's got two patterns off four on opposing sides. David Orloff met Foster at the Ren Fair and took some classes. Great, David, glad to hear it. And Patty Hayes, you love our work, we love you. Thanks for showing up. Please be sure to comment, like what you see, share it by all means. Now what Josh is doing now is trying to push the blue glass, the canes, into the gather he has. Once he gets that all situated and sealed up well, and he's sure that he doesn't have any little air bubbles trapped in it, then he'll worry about making it a real cylinder and just exactly what he needs. See how they flare out back at the back of the pipe by holding his hands down? They've changed that and now by holding his hands upward. See how he's adjusting the back end and the front end of the gather of glass. And you'll gather once more before the pull? No, nope. let's, let's okay. keep the blue on the outside. Okay, so we're going to have the blue directly on the outside. And uh, so Todd in a moment here is going to fix up another post. And they're going to do this the old-fashioned way. They're not going to use a drill. Normally when we make twisted cane, I'm helping Josh he uses the drill and makes me twist by hand, which I think is grossly unfair. Okay, so you can see this beautiful pattern of four on each side. And just imagine in your mind's eye right now what that's going to look like as it twists. And these guys have done this enough that they'll be sure to twist in the same direction. If we've got one of them going clockwise and one counterclockwise, it would defeat the purpose. Todd's got the post cooled over there. Josh is still driving heat in. And when he comes out, you'll see that this slug of glass flexes at the pipe. Not out in the middle, but right at the pipe. Last heat now? Last heat. Last heat. He'll probably dip the end in water just to cool it a little bit. He's got this shape. You also notice it flares outward a little bit toward the tip. There he goes into the water. You can probably hear the sizzle. And now he's going to get that really hot. It is possible to get it too hot. He could get it hot enough he couldn't control it. Oh yeah. And we've all done that. Oh yeah. Okay, so he's in there in the glory hole turning it. I'll step back out of his way, and he'll meet Todd over by those uh, sticks. Now watch the glass separate from the gathering pipe. You can see it getting longer right there. He gets the attachment, he hands it to Todd, and Todd's pointing downward. We're trying to get the glass off of that gathering iron. That's where it gets colder. Josh is not pointing down. He's keeping a good well of glass there, and by turning really fast, they're getting a really great pattern in this. This area right here where it's starting to cool will be their final diameter. We'll come around so we can get a good view of Josh doing this. Notice still the diameter decreasing up here but we've still got a good bit of glass down here to work with. Now with this twisting, it will eventually come to the point that he can't pull much more. So sometimes with the twisted glass, we leave a little bit on the post iron. Looks like he's getting a really good run out of this one though. See Todd down there cranking away. 
and we're getting a nice long pull out of this. We'll get a close up of the canes in just a minute, but this is the cool part. So he just told Todd to stop turning. At some point, Josh will be turning and it would actually turn the pipe that's in Todd's hand. You can see the taper up here where there's still a lot of heat. So maybe this first eight inches or so we won't get to use. But look at this consistent diameter running all the way down. And no, I'm not going to try the limbo. And we're certainly not going to jump rope. There it goes onto the floor. Josh will grab a pair of tweezers and again, break the glass. That's waste over there. And once again, he'll cut this in about seven or eight foot lengths or so. And then uh, a little later on, we'll take that in the back and cut it into the size of pieces we want to use. I'm going to come down here near him so we can get down close and see this pattern. That is a beautiful twist. You can see how the groups of four crisscross each other from the twisting action. Christy Blackham, thank you very much. We really appreciate your comments. So please remember, comment, share, like. How about, uh, unless you can do an emoji of hand clapping, how about some hearts for Josh? Thank Come you, on, thank you. flood the screen, flood the screen. Let's see some hearts. Sweat here. Yeah. She's sweating. <laughs> And while you're at it, remember to comment. Please. If you've got any questions, if you'd like further explanation of what we're doing, how we're doing it, we probably can't tell you why we are. We just do. But uh, let us know what you, what you want to know about. And by all means, like us, share, comment. Please do. And you can purchase pieces. So let's go back up here. We have completed number two on the list today. We're done with the twisted cane pull. Now the twisted canes can come in all kinds of uh, permutations. We can have 10 or 20 canes that all get twisted around and that gives us a really fine net like on this beautiful bowl right here that Todd made. So that's a lot of twisting. So here comes Foster. I'm going to get out of his way. He's carrying the white straight cane that was pulled. He's going to put it back up over here on the shelf and in a little while we'll cut it. Uh, sometimes we put all the canes evenly around the piece and that's what we've got here in uh, the beautiful cane cups that Foster made. So that looks like that's probably about a 10 cane pattern. And then this one has uh, what's called veiled cane. And since I'm on it and they're getting ready to go, still setting up for the next piece, I'll tell you that the veiled cane is made by filling the color. You saw in the white cane that Josh surrounded the color with clear. In the case of veiled cane, we can open the color up. It has to be blown out a little bit. And then we have a choice. One of our favorite choices is what we call snorkeling. And maybe in a couple weeks or so, we'll show you how we snorkel, but it actually does involve taking an open tube of glass, putting it into the surface of the furnace, and sucking in on the blowpipe. It's really pretty cool, but the first time you do it, it's a little nerve wracking. Uh, let's see, here's another veiled cane in this beautiful large swirl ball or gazing ball if you will so so Sam asks uh, oh, I'm sorry Sarah asks if not only do you need to be careful of being burnt you also need to worry about being cut by the glass does it happen often if ever well we hate to admit it but it does happen ever but not often and usually not very serious most of the burns in glass blowing come from a transfer of heat to metal when we use the metal tools, or like you saw Josh rolling the glass on the metal marvering table, that table gets really hot. And then if you come up alongside it and decide to rest your hand, you might be in for a nasty surprise. Okay, so, and uh, let's see, Bridget said she loves the pattern on the plate. So here it is, right there, there's the plate, Bridget. 
Foster's holding up a piece of the blue cane and with this white background let's move in and get a really good close-up view of what those crisscross patterns look like and uh, we call that a wigwag design on the platter and that's done by twisting the canes in opposite directions along a large piece. So the prices, the cane ornaments, all of these here, plus any that you might see in our catalog, the cane ornaments are 55. The large cane swirl ball with that beautiful veiled cane right there, that's 350. The candy dishes are 149 each. And as Josh and Todd get set up in a moment, that's what they'll be making next. And the cane goblets are 165 a pair. All the rest of the pieces that you see here, numbers one through eight, with the exception of two, are one of a kind. They are individually priced, and we'll cover those for you later. Or if you want to know right now, want to purchase one of these, you can direct message Theta or go on uh, artofire.com or uh, any other method you can get in contact with her, short of carrier pigeon or I guess they're called carrier pigeons then. Anyway, that's uh, that's what we've got for you today. And they're still in the process of working things out. So I'm going to explain a little bit about this little piece over here. This is one I did a few years back. And this has got these bubbles trapped in it. And so the way those bubbles are trapped, if I can get over here and show you where the patterns of cane crisscross, there's a little bit of space in each intersection. And because the canes are rounded, it traps a little air bubble right down in there. So when you see the pieces that have all those bubbles, they'll be uh, trapped in between layers of cane. Okay, and we might do something like that in another episode. So now Josh is... Uh, I think ready over here we're going to come over and uh, one of the things about picking up cane is you make a collar so you can see that these canes which are pre-made are laid out like a row of pencils and what he's doing right now is taking a measurement with what's called a pie divider which is really a shortcut so instead of having to do the 3.14 thing all we do is set this and we can measure the size of the collar what actually happens on these is Josh has done so many of them with the uh, ornaments and uh, other pieces that this is pretty much a standard size. He can just eyeball it. He knows when he's got the collar made the right, side, the right size to pick those up. But if we get into a 30 or 40 cane gather, we want to measure it. So now he's going to put the pipe into the glory hole and he's going to blow through while it's in there. And that's going to make an opening on the end, and it actually pushes out some small filaments of glass. And now you can see the hole in the end. He's going to come over and make sure that that's opened up. If I don't get in the way of his jacks, he makes sure it's wide open. And then he'll push the collar down onto the pipe for ease of gathering. See how he put the jack hinge on top? He's checking the measurement with the calipers. And he would have got there anyway, because like I said, he does this so many times. All righty. So now he's got the collar made. And he's putting that over in the pipe warmer to stay warm. And since I'm holding a camera, he's going to run the plate himself this time, which he does quite often anyway. We work together, all of us. But now he's going to put those canes into the 2200 degree heat and start warming them up. So by doing this gently, he'll get this to the point that they are fused together. So what looked like a sheet of like little pencils is going to become one piece. And then when he uses his collar to roll up on it, it'll pick them all up. So he keeps an eye on it. You'll notice he's holding it downward a little bit into the glory hole, but they won't fall off the end. He's got a couple of metal brackets on the side to keep them from rolling off the side. 
And about the last thing you want to hear when you're making a cane piece is your assistant with the plate saying, uh-oh, like maybe they twisted the plate a little bit and the canes fell off. But we're in no danger of that here. Foster, do you remember David Orloff? I do. He does, David. He would never forget you. Hi, David. He said he didn't know if you'd remember him. Okay. So, Josh is now moving the little bracket off to the side. Not sure if he can see that with the brightness of the glory hole. That bracket could stick to the canes and make the pickup difficult. So in a few moments, when he's happy with the heat, he'll bring it over, lay it on the bench rails, and grab the collar to pick up the canes. I'm gonna come on over here so you can get an end view of the pickup. If you've got any questions, please ask. Make sure to like us, share. The more viewership we get, the more people we get to share this with. And by all means, contact Theta. If you'd like to purchase any of the pieces, we'll go over them again in a little bit. And we also have a giveaway this week. And this week the giveaway is a beautiful red twisted cane ornament. So here comes Josh out now. You just saw Foster jump from grabbing moderately hot metal. But it's not all that hot. But every once in a while, the heat of the glory hole actually sneaks under that shield and heats up something you're not expecting. Here comes Josh. He's going to lay the uh, pin on the bench. He's going to come up and start on one end. He makes contact and he starts rolling. Now watch the sheet move up. The sheet rolls up. He brushes, uh, and we're gonna take his tweezers and make sure that everything stays with the sheet. And Foster is gonna put the uh, uh, plate back on the back bench so Josh can come back. So the first order of business is to get these sealed up. And you can see a couple of them didn't cooperate. But being the experienced glass blower he is, Josh is able to just manipulate it with his tweezers. And now there's the seam where the two ends of the sheet matched up. Now with a brush, he'll get rid of the junk that's on it. And it, it always picks up a little bit of kiln wash or anything that's on the plate. So now the task is to keep the heat in it just enough so they can manipulate, but not get all soft and sagging. Turn it into glory hole, and he's got to make sure this is sealed up or he'll never be able to blow it out. So one place we can already see that he needs to seal is right up at the pipe where the two canes don't quite touch, but rest assured, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. He pinches it together. And now he'll begin to marver which is to roll it on the metal tabletop, and this is going to seal everything together. The canes are soft enough that they can push together a little bit, but not so soft that they get all wobbly. Notice he's turning in each direction. It's very easy to twist the cane. Lots of times we do deliberately. So here he comes on the marver, and you can see these nice straight lines of cane. If he sees it start to twist, he'll apply pressure in the opposite direction to untwist it. And that's what he's up to right now. So he's going to try to keep these as straight as he can, as long as he can, and make sure that they're sealed. It's really hard to find the leaks, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And you don't ever want to have to plug it with extra glass, but it does happen at times. Let's have some comments, folks. Let's hear from you. Does anybody I mean, know who first started using cane? Does anybody know? Leave it in the comments who they think started using cane first. Michael Herman. Hey, uh, Michael Herman. <laughs> that was only 20 years ago. I think it dates back a little further than that. <laughs> All right, Paul counts. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to walk around the other side of the barber so you can get a good view of what's going on here. So Josh will turn in one direction, sometimes more than another. You just saw him take a little bit of curvature out of the tip by applying pressure in the opposite direction. So the glass is constantly moving, and what he wants to do is make sure that it's moving in both directions so it stays straight. That said, by the time you get to the end of the piece, you almost always have a little bit of curvature at the lip, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So here he goes now, he's using his jacks to seal that open tube. So by cutting that off of there, he's now basically created a cane bubble. And now he can make a piece of glass out of it. He's grabbing his blow hose. This is so that he can actually blow air into the piece while he manipulates the glass with his hand. So this is like the ultimate uh, rubbing your head and patting your stomach or vice versa. He's got a lot of things to pay attention to here. So like right now, he's watching the heat of the glass. He's watching his rotation that the uh, torque doesn't twist it. And then in a moment, he's going to add breathing to it. Well, he's always breathing, but you so. get the idea. So we've had no answers, Josh. Who started Kane? Do you know, Bruce? I, I would guess Venetians, but I don't know. Actually, canes were used in uh, ancient, uh, let's see, where did they start? In like Mesopotamia, and they used cane to decorate glass that was not blown. That's right. So I would say in the Middle East, somewhere in a country that no longer exists. So while he's testing my historic knowledge, which is minimal, you can see he's blown out the piece some. And that's proof that he got it sealed. So the Egyptians would often pull cane and just make pieces out of the cane before they were able to actually blow pieces. Actually, one of my favorite ideas, but nobody else in this studio will go along with it, is to create a core of a mixture of hay and cow dung, and then coat that with glass, make a piece, and then dig it out after it's annealed. But that really isn't very popular. Okay, so Josh is blowing and using the jacks. Look at the lines on these uh, cane pieces now. He's got nice straight lines, and he just gave a gentle nod of the head. No, he's not Santa Claus going up the chimney. He's asking Todd to bring him glass for a foot. Glad Todd gathers up the glass. He's going to get another coating on there then he'll present it to Josh, who will cut it off for a foot. Remember to like us, share, comment. Let's, uh, let's see, let's get some action going here. Y'all are quiet today. We need, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'll, I'll stop and we'll answer you. Joyce Ferguson did not like the idea of gathered dung. All <laughs> right, all right, here we go, and we get the blob of glass on there. Josh centers it, clips it off. I back out of his way. He's going to go reheat briefly. Now, if this little piece that's the foot is a little off center, he'll just brush it with either the back of his jacks or a paddle. Then he chooses the paddle. See how he brushes and presses against it. Now he'll use his jacks in the space between the foot and to the ball. This gives us a little separation for a really elegant foot. And while this is all going on, Todd is busy making a punty for you. So this is just a little bit of glass on the end of a pipe. It serves like a piece of glue, more or less. Why hay and cow dunk? Because it would dry out and you could actually put molten glass onto it and form a vessel. And unlike concrete, you'd be able to dig it out after your vessel was done. I don't know if they wore gloves or not. So, that's a digression nobody needed to hear. But I can't help myself. Alright, Josh has got the piece all formed up for this. 
As we've told you before, we make the bottom half of a vessel first and then the top. Josh will take the glass on the putty, put it in the center. If it's off by a little bit, he'll adjust with his tweezers. When he gets it just exactly right, he'll let that cool a little bit because it's kind of sloppy right there. That's a very hot foot and it's a hot putty. So as soon as that's stable, he scores the neck so it breaks easily and Todd carries it over for a quick reheating of the lip area, but no need to heat the foot because that was just putty. Now Todd is going to come over here and pick up some of this beautiful white that's going to be what we call a lip wrap. And that's an application of color around the end. So we'll come over here and try to take a quick look at the end of Josh's piece that he's slowing down just a little bit for us. And you can see where the canes come up. All right, so the purpose of the lip wrap is to kind of hold things together and also disguise them. Now he's got two different colors here. He's got white and he's got blue. No, red. That's red? Yep, that's okay. the red over the white. So they are different in their absorption of heat. Not a whole lot, but enough that it will scallop or make the end of the piece uh, stretch more in some places. So putting that band of white uh, lip wrap is uh, something you do to just keep it all under control. Now David Hogan knows more uses for moo poo. I'm so glad to have helped you today. So we'll wait right here as Josh opens the lip a hair. Yep. Todd's coming over to the back. He's taking a flash. They asked me to move closer so you get better and better shots. Now, I, I don't know if they're getting a little annoyed having to move around me. So, Josh will take the pipe from Todd with a pair of shears, and he will lay it onto the mouth, pull back a little, and a thin string of white comes all the way around, and then by pressing straight down toward the floor, it just peels off. Beautiful work, guys. So now all that's left, all that's left, like this is a piece of cake, yeah, is to open the vessel up. And I'm going to make a quick trip down there while he's reheating, and we'll take a look at some of the ones that are the finished product. Again, these are all for sale. We've got a multitude of colors. And this one back here that has a lot of different colors, you can see the scalloping. And the same thing here. And in the blue here, you can see how things scallop. And that's because some of the glass pulls at a different rate than others. In other words, the heat makes it pull. Right at the top, you can see just a little bit of curvature in the canes where the force of the jacks were applied. So we'll get back down to Josh now, since I know you want to see what's going on. But having looked at the finished product, you kind of know what to look for. So here we are with the ball of glass, and he's got the jacks in. And everything's staying nice and straight. And by choosing which way he turns, he applies the force in a different direction. You can see just a little bit of curvature in there, but not much. Now the next thing he's going to do is grab these wooden jacks called Pertopi. They sit in water so they won't crack, and they scar the glass a lot less than metal jacks would. So after he gets the heat into the end, he's going to come back over with the wooden jacks and start to open this up. You can see the flare taking shape, Foster stepping in to paddle the lip a little, and you can also see just a little bit of curvature at the tip, which is pretty much characteristic of cane pieces. Yes, David, he does make that look so easy. It's all done with smoke and mirrors. That's right. <laughs> no, it's done with many years of experience. All right, so he's coming back in. For a little more touch up on it, he's 
trying to get that so that it's open the size he wants, but it also stays round. And it's a good thing that the live stream doesn't convey the smell of the burning wood. You can see the smoke. So there we go. Beautiful. And not much curvature. The red doesn't twist as quite as much as blue would. So now Josh is done with this. He's going to heat it up. Foster's going to get some gloves on. They'll take the piece off and put it away in the annealer. And this one's available for purchase too. So if you'd like this one, direct message Theta. Tell her you want the red candy dish that Josh just made. And let's see some, yeah, show him some love. Let's see some hearts. Yeah, there we go. Okay, David Orloff is saying applause. Thank you. Lots of practice. Yeah. Lots of practice. So that's, uh, that's the candy dish. Let's work our way back up front and see what we've got going on next. Alrighty, so we've gotten through the cane pulls and the candy dish. Next is going to be a mosaic rondelle. The mosaics are made basically by pulling a piece of cane, but then cutting across it instead of using it on its length. So I'm going to pick up one of these little pieces of cane here and try to get it up in front of the camera. So you can imagine if we took this and cut it into half inch long pieces, you would see the end of it. Now this particular piece of orange cane doesn't have a very interesting design, but the cane that Todd pulled and will be heating has a really interesting design. Here's an example of one right here where each of the little pieces of Murini they're called is basically a square and it's blue and it's then filled okay so that's uh that's what we look like with it um so todd will be putting his plate of murini onto this uh, uh handle the shovel and yeah so He's going to be getting set up there for a minute, so let's go on back to the to the display table and what's available. So, number one, or first thing, not number one, but be sure to comment because you put the comments in when the randomized drawing is held next week. This beautiful red twisted cane ornament could be yours. I'm not sure if we ship to the Netherlands, Michael. All right, so that's our giveaway for this piece. And we have quite a few cane ornaments up here on display. Some with the twisted color, like you see with the red one. Some where the color is just like one single band, but it's the white cane that's twisted up. So we have one with multiple colors. We've got one up here in red, and here's a blue. Those are 55 each. This gazing ball or large cane ball with the veiled cane is $350. And then the candy dishes right here, just like the one you saw made, those are $149. Message Theta, tell her which one you want, or you can even place an order for one of the colors with your choice. We have a pair of cane goblets here. They are $165 a pair and can be ordered in other colors. So it's gonna be, so Todd's got his plate of Murini warming up over here. And I'm gonna get over here real quick and then out of his way, he's gonna lay them down here. And there's a good shot of the Murini that he'll be picking up. So those were like canes that have been cut into small lengths. All right, we'll get out of his way while he prepares to keep going. And he's going to start heating those up. And we'll come back over here to the display table. We've got this beautiful veiled cane vase here, number one. And I'll go through the prices on these while we're waiting. That is uh, $399. 
The Marini vase here is 650. The wigwag rondelle, someone commented on earlier, 650. The Murini vase number five is 650. The filigrana case, the twisted white with the beautiful pink, that one is 575. The reticello with the Encalmo is 825. And the twisted cane vase is 425. Now, these prices, admittedly, are a little bit higher than pieces like mugs or things like that. But the work that goes into them is very intensive. It takes a long time just to get everything together and make it. And then on top of it, you've got to have the glass blower's experience to make them. So, Bill O'Donnell, I remember you from the class. Welcome aboard, and thanks for the kind words. Hey Josh, Bill O'Donnell says hi, he remembers Bill, us. Yeah. yeah. Bill took classes with us. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay, so Todd's in the process now of heating up this plate of Murini, and he needs to get it to a good temperature to where they'll adhere together as a sheet, just like uh, Josh did with the piece he made. So it's going to be back and forth into the glory hole and then several adjustments. Please let us know what you think, comment, share, like, all that good interactive stuff. Throw some hearts at us, we'd love it. How do you think those cane dishes work as a light shade? We do make lamps, uh, usually they're, or lamp shades, they're typically custom orders, okay? So that would probably require contact with the studio. That type of cane could be used but I would imagine you would want something a little bit larger and we'd have to be a little bit thicker with it to uh, uh, hold, hold up. If we had a really thin, light piece, uh, it might not stand up to the drilling and the construction. So what uh, Todd's getting ready to do here is make us a rondelle. Uh, I looked up rondelle, I love Google, and the first thing I saw was a dagger. Apparently, during the medieval period, or some of you that go to the Renaissance fairs may know that a rondelle is a type of dagger. It's also a piece of armor. It is usually just a round plate of steel, and it's used for protection against somebody thrusting their dagger-like rondelle at you, I suppose. The rondelles have been singing groups for years too, but in this case, it's going to be a spun out plate or platter, just like the one over here on display today that has what we call the wigwag pattern. That is a rondelle right there, basically a flat disc. Lots of times what we'll do with rondelles if we don't display them on a stand, is we'll hang them from the ceiling. So now what Todd's doing over here is squeezing it together very carefully. He needs to get this all uh, set up as basically one piece of glass. When he's satisfied with that, then he'll work toward picking it up. And it looks like, okay, he's turning his collar. So we'll come on over here, see if we can get an action shot. David Hogan says Google is his friend too. Yep, that's that's where we get it all. So Todd's in the glory hole getting his heat on there, making sure that everything is sealed up and uniform. He needs an even heat throughout. That's one of the things that's hardest for glass blowers to learn, is to get an even distribution of heat. Okay, so here we go. He's gonna take his collar, and he's gonna come from there. He's gonna let it go from both sides. It's still hot, and he's just flexing it a little bit. These are much thicker, They're a little trickier to deal with. So he's taking a nice measured 
turn around. Josh is going to remove the uh, Pastorelli out of the way. And then Todd will work on bringing this around gently, nice and slow, to join things up. He's going to brush the kiln dust off of it. Todd, will you be gathering over the Murini? Yes. He will. Yes, Bill, he will be gathering over the Murini. It's, pro it's probably essential simply because with all those colors in there and a slight variation in thickness, if he were to just use that unadorned, the heat differential between portions of it would cause it to be uneven. And by coating it with a clear gather on the outside, he'll be able to control that quite easily. So you can see he really pushing on it but that's because he doesn't want it hot enough to just fall all over. So it takes just a little more time and concentration, but well worth it. Valley Shepherd, thanks for joining us. Hello there. Okay. Let's have some comments. Let's have some questions. You don't want me going back to the cow dung, I'm sure. So let's stick with this. All righty. Todd's going to keep heating that in the meantime. Josh has taken, did you take the blues you just pulled? Yes. These are the blue canes that Josh and Todd pulled a few moments ago. And Josh has them set up on a plate ready for the next piece. So, is there a concern that there is no coating on the inside? David, no, there's not. Because what will happen is the outside will form the basis of it the uh, open if you will inside of it will present a face that has uh, nothing else on it so the murini will stand right there the heat distribution won't be a problem because of the clear that he has on there so you can feel the texture on the interior you'll be yeah like todd said you'll be able to feel the texture so now that he's got it closed up He's bringing it over and gently laying it on the marver around that seam just to seal it up. We'll walk over there and watch some of the marver work here for a moment. He'll do the same thing just like Josh did. He'll simply roll it on the marver and there he goes with his cylinder. So he can use the marver, he can use his jacks, he can use a variety of cool tools. But he can uh, get this now sealed up rolled into a really nice cylinder, close off the end, and then gather over it. So you see how we take what is basically a tube right now, and then in a little while, we make a bubble out of it. Notice how that he's pushing down on it and it's sealing at the pipe right now. Then by raising his hands a little bit, he gets the force applied to the tip of the glass. Now back to level, we make a nice smooth cylinder. So it's this constant, oh, those are beautiful. Come on, let's see some hearts. Let's show some love. This man's hard at work here. There we go. Come on, that's a couple of hearts. Come on, folks, let's, let's see some hearts. Let's show the man some love. There we go. Okay, well, anyway, once Todd gets this, to the cylinder, nice and tight, and a uniform diameter running down its length, he'll be able to just keep going from there. Uh, Bill asked what he'll do with the scrap. We have several options on these. If he closes it off with the jacks, like Josh did, he can actually flatten it, and then over time, with a collection of the cast off, make a piece. So he'd have a bunch of little circles that you can put into a piece. Another option would be, if he chose, would be to put some clear glass down and then plug the end with clear, but we'll see what he does. Notice the angle of the glass, and that's what allows him to apply the pressure evenly. He wants a good tight seal there right at the pipe so that it doesn't leak. 
and all that orange glow tells you he's got a lot of heat in it. Now he's going to start to level out the bottom just by applying gentle pressure and pushing. He twists it a little bit and that helps to untwist what he's got. So, here we are shaping up the cylinder. we got a pipe cooler over here which is actually a more recent addition. What have we had this? About eight years? I don't think Maybe that long. not that five years. So for a long time we didn't have a pipe cooler. I would bring my 7-Eleven water bottle and just squirt it. But well, we lost a piece that was hanging over there. It's off the end here. Uh, so let's see what the damage is. Oh, okay, there's a witch trap. The witch has escaped. All right. Well, yeah, because we have them, if you can see them, we have them hanging up. Yep. To some others we have. And I bet the leather just dried out and just at that exact moment broke. <laughs> so, yes, we break glass. So, Todd now is going to cast this on. Just like Josh did the lip wrap, you can see it get a perfect diameter all the way around, pushes toward the floor, and now he has the clear ring at the bottom. So that's a third option, and that answers your uh, question there, Bill. That that's how he's going to avoid the cast off or the clip off of that bottom row of Murini. And they were really beautiful, so it would have been a shame to lose them. Now with that clear down there, he can push that together, and that'll be the bottom of the bubble. Once it's all sealed, he can cut that clear off if he doesn't want that to still be there. So he's using the jacks now, and he's kind of pushing that clear over and squeezing it. So now you can see that this is going to seal up that tube without losing a bunch of Marini. Get a bit of a mess there, experts. So this is all part of the setup. Once he gets this formed in a, into a, uh, a bubble that is completely sealed and would allow him to blow into it, then he'll go ahead and gather over. So be sure and like us, share, and comment. The comments are what's going to get you entered in the drawing for that beautiful red twist ornament. If you don't comment, you're not in the drawing. And Josh, and not only is an eminently skilled glass blower, he's figured out how to go through the records of an hour and 55 minute broadcast and randomize the comments per person. Tell me you looked that up on Google. No, I just broke it down for how many seconds were in the whole broadcast. Okay. And then randomized that amount of seconds and it came up with uh, the lady that won our cat from last week. All yeah. right. All right, so Todd's getting the blow hose hooked up also. You can see a really good detail of the Murini here. They've cooled off enough that they're not glowing. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, Todd's gonna heat that up some. He'll be shaping this. He'll probably blow a little outward pressure against the uh, block, and that is what will make sure he gets the inflation to the size he wants. What type of piece are we making now? Well, I don't have a mouse in my pocket, so there's no we involved here, but Todd is making a rondel, a mosaic rondel. Okay, so, it's a flat disc. I wasn't quite very, sure very similar. We're just, we're just gonna walk right past that. Very similar to this piece here. It's round. It's narrow and it'll either be mounted in a stand for observation, you could put it on your mantle, or sometimes we drill holes in them and hang them from the ceiling. 
I'm not going to walk down to them, but if you look at the end of the studio down there, just above the door transom, you can see that we've got several rondelles hanging from the ceiling. So, let's get back over here and watch the real action. Takes a little while to drive the heat in like he wants. You can see from that bright orange glow that he's got it hot. It's also moving all around. So the block is going to help put a skin on it and stabilize. So by using that block to shape the glass, he's able to blow when he wants and inflate it a little bit and get a nice pattern going. We're going to come over here and you can see just exactly what that Burini looks like. Notice he's not turning super fast. That's so he can maintain the orientation of the lines and keep it all nice and straight. He's inflated it some. And let's take a look at this end right here. That is gorgeous. This is where those Murini come together, right in the center. Okay, like us, share, comment. Come on, let's get some comments. Nobody's asked a question in a while. I have a clear iridescent rondelle hanging in her kitchen window all year long. Well, thank you, Lynn. They make great window decorations, especially the light coming through. We've got lots of rondelles. In fact, if you go to our website, artoffire.com, we've got a whole bunch of them shown there. We can make them with a variety of designs and practically any color you want. So Todd's waiting now to gather. So he lets this cool some. If he were to go into the furnace with the glass too hot, it would make everything collapse. So he wants a stable surface as he goes into the furnace and gathers that fresh 2,000 degree glass on it. So wait a couple moments, and when he's ready, he's going to take his gather. So he reaches over the ledge, lets the glass plunge down into the uh, pool of glass, and as he turns, he increases his speed, and now he's going to drizzle some back off into the furnace. So we still have more to use later on. He's going to close the door up. You noticed he let the glass drizzle off, drain off by pointing it down. And then he's got the amount of glass that he wants. He'll probably grab his shears and trim just a little bit. Take a little bit more off. There we go. And you can still see the design of the Murini throughout. So what he's got right now is a very cold core, because we sat here and watched him let it get cold, and he's got a really hot exterior. So the block now is shaping it. Does heating repeatedly or too often damage the color? No, David, it doesn't, okay? Uh, the color's gonna stay constant. Uh, if you blow a lot and overblow the glass, you can stretch it to where the color gets thin and it kind of dissipates. Yep, Bill, drip and strip. That's what we can call it. Now he's using the newspaper, which has been wet, to chill the end. So now it's going to be a matter of shaping a sphere-like shape and cutting a jack line. Most everything we make in here starts out as some type of sphere with a jack line, which is what we call that compression up close to the neck. Then if we want to make it into an ornament, it's pretty much done because it's a circle. And if we want to make it into a vase, we let that sphere hang down or spin it around and gravity stretches it out. And if we want to make it a low bowl, we actually point it up in the air and make, let gravity help us out. You can see that Todd's using the jacks now to create this line. We can't spin out the rondelle with that piece of steel attached to it. So we're getting a nice tight line cut up there right at the neck. This is where he'll deliberately break the glass. The paper cools certain parts of the glass, so we have zone heating. And now he blows it out, and that paper kept it from getting too thin there. You can actually see the expansion up by the pipe. 
up by the pipe it got a lot but down at the bottom it didn't get so much so he's using the paper to cool get in the shape he's doing So he's going to be communicating with Josh what he wants. And, uh. The ruffle bow? Okay. So we're going to change it up a little bit. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes the glass kind of changes things. Lynn asked, what is your favorite kind of piece to make? My favorite kind of piece is the next one I'm going to make. How about you, Josh? A favorite kind of piece? I really like working with the cane. Okay. I really do. You can get some really amazing kind of lines, geometric patterns into it. So I really do love working with the cane. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Todd does a lot of mosaic pieces. I like doing the mosaics, the white ones, the little threads. It's my favorite piece. All righty. What is your favorite color piece to make? Oh wow, that's a tough one. I'm a little like Josh. I'm really partial to cane, and uh, I like working with that. And I can put a multiple group of colors together. I particularly like uh, what's called a cranberry and a ruby color, and mixed with blue, which is really kind of like that piece. I showed over on the display table. We'll get back to that in a moment. So there's the foot, just as Todd delivered one to Josh a little while ago, Josh delivered one to Todd. So they get it all centered up and cut off, and then he'll uh, either use a paddle or the back of his jacks to center it, straighten it, and get it into shape he wants, and then Josh will bring him a putty. So you can see the glass down on the bottom of the piece. Todd's uh, reaching for the paddle. I mean, oh, he's using the footboard. This is even better. So you can see that's two pieces of wood, and by squeezing it between them, it forms the foot. How elegant. All right. So the footboards have been used for a long time to form uh, a foot on the bottom of the piece. It's basically just two pieces of uh, fruit wood that are hinged together with uh, a piece of webbing and then we burn some slots in it so that they'll go on to the glass and form that nice elegant foot and you can see how really well shaped it is Josh has got the putty made he's ready and he's uh, cooled the pipe off he's going to take what's called a flash heat which is just a a brief introduction of heat just to make sure it's not cold and then we'll stick it up now Todd's using what's called a sovietta or puffer and that foot was hot so he cooled the bottom a little bit he puts the putty right in there and gets it all centered up when he's happy with that and there to all right sorry about that folks we're back uh, entirely on our end, a loss of Wi-Fi, and we couldn't create a hot spot quick enough. I'm hoping you're still with us. Please don't have given up. Anybody there? Hello, hello. Come in. All right, well, we're going to go ahead with the filming in the hopes that folks might turn on uh, their computer later on and see us actually on the website. So here we are back with Todd. We missed a portion of things, but he's got the connection to hey we got two viewers a couple people didn't give up on us we're up to three we apologize folks we're really sorry it's just a loss of Wi-Fi uh, next time we will be prepared with a hot spot to get going right away Todd's now opening up the bowl with his jacks he's going to keep working that and he's flattening it. Bridget you're back we're back 
we're trying with everything we've got. Okay, so we've got six of you back. And Kathy, welcome aboard, Kathy Henley. Okay. You need part trophies? Let me go over here and get a tool for Todd. Again, we're terribly sorry about the loss of signal for a while, but we seem to be back online now. And uh, like I said, we'll probably get ourselves ready with some uh, hot spot or something next week. At any rate, we're nearing completion on this. Todd is going to make a ruffled bowl out of this, which means he's going to use centrifugal force to spin the glass really fast. It's going to fan out like a top hat, and then he's going to let it ruffle. We're moving just a little bit closer to see some of the expansion here. You can see it looks a little wobbly, but that's just because of all the heat in it. By churning at different speeds, he'll get it completely under control. He gets it to the diameter he wants. There he goes really fast. It's now flat like a top hat. And then going vertical or nearly allows it to ruffle. There we have a beautiful ruffled bowl out of it. The Murini is fantastic. And this too can be yours. But you'll have to call for a price because we don't know yet. But this is absolutely unique and one of a kind. So Todd will bring it back. Josh will catch it and put it in the annealer. Todd's going to take a drop of water. And... There it is. Wow. Awesome. All righty. Cool. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's see some hearts and applause for Todd. Thank you, Todd. Beautiful. Yay. Bridget says, wow. So over here, you're going to do the bell pickup? Yep, we're going to do the bell pickup. Okay, so Josh is going to do what we call a bell pickup. And he's going to pick up this cane here. And you can see it's almost in a square pattern. And what he's going to do is form some glass on a blowing iron. And he's going to shape it basically like a toilet plunger. And we sometimes call it a plunger pickup or a more elegant way is to call it a bell pickup. I like bell. You like I bell, bell better. Maybe like the name my chihuahua should have. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking, Joyce. Okay, so anyway, uh, he'll make this bell or plunger out of the glass. And then when he comes over here to do the pickup, when this has been heated, he'll bring it from above straight down onto the canes and they will get caught on the rim of the bell. So, let's go on back to our table and see what we got over here. I'm going to get out of the heat for a moment. So, is that the same pattern cane we saw him make earlier? Yes, Bridget, it is. That cane is what he and Todd pulled with the four pieces of blue on each side of the core. And so Todd will begin to warm that up for him. Josh will form the bell or plunger pickup on his blowing iron and then pick that up. So let's go back. Uh, well, sorry about the interruption, folks. Glad that you've stuck with us. And we're down to number five now, a cane vase. So we have options as to how to pick the cane up. You've seen it rolled up. Uh, from the sides. Now you're going to see a plunger pickup 
And what this is going to do, or a bell pickup, this is going to create a draping effect. Uh, they'll form loops in the cane. We'll explain that a little more as we go along. But for what we've got here today for you, uh, comment please, get your name in that random drawing, however it is Josh figures it out, and a beautiful red twisted cane ornament can be yours. That's our giveaway this week. And should you desire any of these other colors and make a purchase, we have several on display here. There are tons of them on our online sales, artofire.com. Cane ornaments are $55 each, and you can see a wide variety of colors. And if there's something you really want that you don't see, ask, because we can make it. All right. We have this large cane ball here, sometimes called a gazing ball, and it's really massive, and the veiled cane on it is gorgeous. And this one is $350. We have candy dishes here, just like you saw Josh make for the demonstration earlier. These are all with the twisted cane, some with a mix of colors, some with a single color. We've got violet, blue, red, green, pink, and a mix. All right, and those are 149 each, or you can purchase the one that you saw Josh make today. We have cane goblets right here. They're 165 a pair. If you don't like the blue, that's not a problem. Just let us know and we can make a pair custom for you. The other pieces are all one of a kind. So they're priced individually and these are all much more difficult to make. These are really uh, represent an extensive amount of work. This number one here is a veiled cane vase. You can see the beautiful blue and pink running the whole distance and no gaps really between the canes. And so it really shows well in the light. Number one is $399. We've covered number two, the goblets. This number three is a mosaic vase. And this one is $650. Number four is the rondelle in the wigwag pattern. And the wigwag rondelle is $650. And we've got a Murini vase here where the white canes are laid in opposition to each other. That's 650. Great. The filigrana and cane back there is, uh, well, they're calling me from back here, but they're not quite ready yet. So Foster's heating the end of this. So I was going to show so that Josh could take his tweezers and pinch it apart. So up to this point, he's just pulling a bubble in the glass. But what he's doing now is separating that and he's going to open it up let's see i took your part trophies did you get them back yeah, okay so he'll use jacks and the wooden jacks to form the plunger or bell so anyway we'll get back over the table in a minute we're probably about three minutes from the pickup be my guess Josh needs to open this up, and he's already got a pair of calipers on his bench here set to the diameter he needs. That's going to be the size of the opening, and what will happen is when he drops that plunger straight down onto the plate, it will entirely encompass the canes. There won't be any gaps. In fact, there'll be some left over on the corners, which will either fold up or cut off, depending on how he feels today. So, he's going to start opening this, and Foster's going to paddle the end. That extra pressure of the paddle pushed hard on the glass thickens it, and he wants a nice thick spot there. So now he puts his calipers up to see where he is. If he needs a little more opening, he just stretches it some. Now he goes with the calipers again. And you can see that bell shape formed now, that plunger, okay? All he's doing now is stabilizing it, getting it nice and round. He'll put a little bit of heat into it, probably right on the edge of the opening so that it sticks to the canes. And when he and Todd communicate that everybody's ready, 
Okay, so they're talking back and forth with all this noise. I don't hear too much, but anyway, he's getting the end of that hot. Todd is over here getting the plate hot. I'm going to find a place that I can kind of stand out away, but then give you a good view of what's going on. You want me to bring this to you, or are you going to come down? I'll come here? down to you. You come here? Okay. Josh, you're going to come from the end or from the front of the bench? So we'll get you a good picture here of a bell pickup or a plunger pickup. Uh, Susie, the paper is just newspaper and uh, it can be folded. You take about seven sheets of paper and fold it really thick and then you soak it in water and it's a perfect insulator. It won't burn you. You just have to make doggone sure that there's no holes or gaps in the paper and it needs to be wet. Not uh, paper mache wet, but just wet enough to uh, hold. So here comes Josh. Pretty good. Yeah, take a look. You there? Yeah, okay, here's Josh with the bell. He's going to take those two for ready, those little metal pieces away. One last little adjustment, a short application of heat, and then away we'll go. Anyway, the newspaper is a perfect insulator as long as it's damp, has been soaked, but not dripping wet. And we can actually hold on to the glass, shape it, cool it, do whatever we need. All right, we're getting the high sign from both of them. Josh is coming over with a pair of shears so he can grab low on the pipe to guide it. Here comes the bell onto the plate of canes. He rocks it to make sure it's secure. And he's up. And there's the plate. Okay, so he's got to make sure that that's adhered. And then he'll also be using a brush again to uh, clean it off. Probably has a little bit of kiln wash on it. You know, make sure he has a good seal all the way around the uh, plunger, all the way around. And you can see those little square corners sticking up, and he'll just have to deal with them as he chooses. Sometimes we fold them up, sometimes we cut them off. He's folding them back up onto the glass. I'll probably right. end up cutting it too. Okay. So he cuts and flips that off. He cuts the next little section of overhang. The ideal here is to get a uniform edge where those little squared corners are clipped off but you're uh, held exactly in place on the outer diameter of the plunger. So he's applying the heat, he's getting the doors open so that uh, he doesn't accidentally tag anything. And in just a moment, he'll come back to the bench and take the other two corners off. So when the glass is hot like that, it cuts really easily. The different materials leave different skin on the glass. Yes, yeah, different things would apply a different amount. So here he goes and he starts right there at the edge. Notice he's angling down a little bit so it doesn't fall back onto the piece. He's getting rid of all the excess there. And now he's got a nice joint there between the two. He's going to brush off the kiln wash. What's that? It does look like an automobile headlamp. No, we don't make headlamps. We'll make lampshades, but we won't do headlamps. So Josh's next task is going to be uh, to seal that in, to roll it on the marver, use the paper, whatever tool he chooses to get a good seal all the way around that joint 
and it'll also decrease the diameter. Are you going to gather over this, or are you going to make a uh, collar and transfer? A collar and transfer. Hey, Patrick, can you drop a pipe? Please? So the question I'm just asking him is, what are we going to do with this thing? So it's got an awful lot of clear glass on it that you can see. So what's going to happen here in a few moments, by using downward pressure, Josh is going to decrease the size, the diameter of this piece of glass. And then after he gets this down to the size he wants, he's going to take the cane off of this assembly, put it onto another pipe, and then he'll be able to have that to blow on. Do you develop that technique at Art of Fire? Uh, no, we did not develop this technique, but we utilize it a lot. It's been around probably for centuries. Josh is going to go ahead and roll it. See how hard he's pressing to decrease the diameter of all that clear and get it down. Would you have just a second after a reheat to show them the loops by yep. burning slow? Absolutely. So Josh is going to turn real slow. I'll get away from the glory hole so it's not in the background. And you'll be able to see the looping of the cane. On two sides of this vessel, the canes get progressively shorter and make smaller and smaller loops going from the tip to the top. So, we'll come over here. And you can see, on that side, there, and now he's going a little bit faster, but he needs to. And in just a moment, if you look closely, you can yeah, see where the loops are. And that's caused, caused by the way the cane is picked up. Just flash this for me, and we'll knock it off into an optic. Actually, don't even flash it. Okay, so... What's going to happen now is Josh has made a constriction in the glass. And here, you can see the loops. So they're going to knock this off into the optic mold. And then after it's in the optic mold, Josh will take another pipe and attach to it. Todd's cooling it with water like he did before. Yes, Susie, we do feel that it's been done before, but we do it best. <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of glass blowers around the country that might disagree. So how about if we say we do it well? And that's that's a good thing. So we're gonna get this all reassembled here onto another pipe. Josh is over at the other bench. He's made a collar. Todd's going to knock that off into the... Sometimes the glass is a little hot. It takes a moment to break free. So we'll break that off into the uh, optic mold. Okay, sorry about that slight interruption, folks. And this was my fault because everybody wanted close-up views. And guess what? A phone shuts down when it gets too hot. So I was using Foster's phone, and it shut down. I hope you're still with us. Have patience. I'm on Theta's phone right now, so I don't have... Uh, the little device that works to keep it all steady. Hey, we got one viewer back. Who's there? We got two viewers back. Come on, let's go for three. This this video will make it online. It's, <laughs> we're we're pedaling uphill. All right, we're getting this cooled off, and into the mold we're gonna go. All right, we got two viewers. Hey, how about using the comments and tell us who made it back? All right, so now we're going to get the collar on there. Hey, we got a heart there. 
It's all that uh, work for that little tiny piece. Just like it breaks. <laughs> All right, so now we're back here trying our darndest. Got two viewers. So if you wind up watching this later on YouTube and we've had interrupted service three times, hey, it's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. Well, Rachel Whitaker's back with us. So anyway. Anyway, Josh now has successfully got the uh, piece onto another blowpipe, and he's going to be working that for a few minutes, sealing it up, and then we'll be on our way. So, again, we apologize for the delays. All those beautiful close-up shots of a bell pickup and uh, the cane layout and everything else, overheated Foster's phone, which we use, and being the smartphone that it is, it's shut down. So, Josh is going to get the uh, the ball of canes stabilized and settled up. What's next, Josh? We're going to gather over it and make it into a base. Okie doke. So you can see it's a lot of work just to get this design. You know, we started out with all that clear glass with that cane, and you know, all that clear glass actually gets thrown into that bucket. We just get left with that bell pick up of the cane. So a lot of work goes into just one little piece. All right. So we're kind of hoping that all three of these videos go together and give you a finished product or a feel for what we've done today. But we're trying our best. So Josh is using the block now and stabilizing the glass, getting a good shape and everything in just a few moments. He'll be, uh, he'll probably blow it out just a little bit, get just the right shape he wants, and then after that, he'll gather. Laura's back with us. Thank you for your patience, Laura. We, uh, we appreciate your efforts on our behalf. Foster's making his way down here. Is your phone still hot, Foster? Can two of us go live at the same time? That's a good question. Well, a good question. well close, close that up, Foster, off of the camera and go to Facebook. Bottom center. And go to Facebook. Yep, get your Facebook app. And now try Go Live and see what happens. All right. So right in the middle. Okay, now we can get a good look at those canes. And I'll try not to burn up Theta's phone either. You can see the loops in the canes now. Okay. Up, oh, right up here on the left. See that red live? Okay. All right. Well, let's see what happens here. We've got Theta's phone on. We're going to try. Starting a live off of Foster. Good took. All right, so now Josh has got to gather. We're going to stay away. I don't know what's going to happen to you folks. Maybe I'll just shut this one down. What's that? All right, so now Josh has got to gather. We're going to stay away. I don't know what's going to happen with two phones going. What's that? Josh is using the newspaper to shape the glass. And using gravity by hanging it downward. All right, there comes the constriction we know is a jack line. This is going to eventually separate it. It's not going to cut it all the way down right now.
You can really see the canes showing up in there. Do we have anybody back with us? Uh, we changed phones, so I don't know if we lost them in the translation or not. Hey, we got one. Somebody's back. Identify yourself, please. <laughs> We're glad to have you. So Foster's phone cooled off, and we're back on that, and we'll put some notifications up on the web page and everywhere to let you know that a full hammered together video will be available. Josh is blowing into it now with the blow hose while he uses the jack. You can see the glass expanding, but the jack line stays tight, and he's going to work this out, blow it out. And Rachel, how about a thumbs up if you got the feedback? A little thumbs up. Marion's with us. All right. So a lesson learned about sometimes giving you that real close up shot is not a good idea. There goes a thumb. Okay, great. How about a couple of hearts? Show us some love. <laughs> All right, so Josh is inflating. As I said earlier, most pieces are made by building a sphere with a jack line or a neckline in it. And then from that point on, oh, there's lots of hearts. Bless your soul. We need it today. This, is, uh, this has been an adventure. Anyway, now that he's got the sphere with a jack line, He's probably going to swing it out now. Is that where we're headed? Yep, we're going to swing it out. All right. I like to ask him musical questions. Have you heard of Swing Out Sister? He's ignoring me. Okay. He spins it around like a propeller blade and watch what he's done to the length of the vessel now. And watch how the canes have stretched. Now with all that heat in there, they're going to be a little bit harder to see, but right now you get a really good view. I'm going to back up just a little bit so we don't get this phone too hot again. You can't say we don't try to give them the best experience possible. All right. Flattening now? Flatten the bottom. Okay, so he's going to flatten the bottom, then Todd will bring him a putty, he'll do the transfer and finish the base. So I'm officially renaming this session to Convoluted Broadcast. You can forget about Kane, this is the Convoluted Broadcast. But you'll see it all, you'll see all these wonderful pieces and we'll review for you what we have up front in a moment. Because right now, that breath-holding moment when you transfer the piece to the putty. Did you ever close your eyes on a transfer, Josh? No, I've never tried that. <laughs> All right, he gets the putty attached. Make sure that it's centered, like right on the same axis as the center of the piece and he'll apply a little water to the neck area and then a vibration breaks it at the weakest point. Todd takes it over to start the heating at the glory hole and then Josh will grab it and take over. Matthew, welcome back. Marion, thank you. Trina, we're glad to have you. Honestly, we're not trying to make today's video like a game of hide-and-seek, okay? <laughs> really, we're not. We, we wanted to have a nice, smooth operation, everybody able to see everything all the time. But you know what? We'll get by. So, Josh now is concentrating the heat at the lip, or the other end of the vessel. The bottom half is made. You can see the color cane design in there swirling around right now, because it's backlit by that 2,000... 200 degree glory hole. So after he gets that heated, he'll come back to the bench and open the mouth. And I'm going to keep a safe phone distance 
So now what? I have to add phone distancing to social distancing? Oh, man. Here we go. He's back to the bench. You can see the orange glow in the end of the piece where it's really hot. Gets his jacks in to do some shaping. Flares it up. You want to paddle? I'm good. You're gonna give this a long neck. Knock that off. Yeah, stop pulling back and then we'll knock off the excess. Alright, so what he's doing is he created a little fold in the end, kind of flower-like, and what he's gonna do is pull on that, chill it, and then actually break it right there where that crease is and uh, have a much smaller and thinner diameter. Trina, we missed you too. We missed we missed a lot while we were offline there, but we're back in business. So the first one actually, first interruption really was a loss of Wi-Fi, and the second one was an overheated phone from me standing too close trying to show you what we have going on. So Josh now is pulling the neck out a little bit. He's elongating it by using that little flare as a point to pull against and now he's got this nice long tube forming and then what he's going to do is select a place to break it off he probably uses jacks to make another line and he might wait another reading to do that that's cooled off a little bit you can tell because it's so blue while the glass is hot that cane appears a little more orange Marion, enjoy the show even with the little problems. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate that, and we're just going to keep on trucking. All right, so now he's chilling the end with a pair of shears, and Todd's going to tap it free. And now he'll use a little propane torch to heat the tip, and that melts that sharp edge in. And if he chooses, he'll tool it a little bit. He'll have to take another flash anyway. And now he's got a beautiful vase here. Diane Sheldon, welcome back. Glad you made it. We've certainly made it difficult today, but we appreciate your persistence. So now you can see the tip of that glowing where it's so hot, but watch how quickly it cools. All right, so I think that looks great. Okay, nice so there we go. Vase. A beautiful blue cane vase done with a bell pickup, which is a little bit different than the normal. Todd has heated up the gloves. Josh is gonna give the putty a tap. And away we go to the annealer. All right, let's hear it for Josh and Todd and that miracle of survival. Oh my goodness, that was a fun one. Okay, so let's go back down here and recap for a moment. And uh, again, apologies for the interruptions, but life goes on. And here we are. Okay, so this is our third live stream. So, hey Josh. He's the movie expert around here. Is it if this is episode three? Is this uh, the Sith? That's right. Yeah, this is Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Anyway, episode three is now in the books. We had a straight cane pull, twisted cane pull, a beautiful little candy dish. The mosaic rondelle decided it wanted to be a beautiful ruffled bowl, and I think it's actually prettier that way. And then the cane vase. So. If you like, we have for purchase all of these beautiful ornaments. And if you've commented on any of the sections that we've broadcast today, you're in the running for our drawing for this free piece of glass, a beautiful red twisted cane ornament. Should you choose to order an ornament, there's your price up there. Uh, they're available online and you can get other colors and styles if you like. 
this large cane ball over here is $350 and the candy dishes you saw Josh what make one earlier we have uh, six right here on display you can order one of these if none of these colors strike your fancy cane goblets are 165 a pair and then we have a variety of one-of-a-kind pieces starting with this uh, veiled cane vase number one number two you saw that was the goblets number three is a mosaic pattern vase number four the wigwag pattern rondelle on a stand five is a murini the white that are uh, in opposing lines six is a veiled and beautiful pink ruffled bowl seven i'm particularly proud of the reticello with uh, pink and blue and cranberry and an encalmo top and number eight is the sandblasted with the frosted look twisted canes so there you have it that's our demonstrations for today we're glad to have you. Thank you so much for those of you that stuck with us. We'll uh, do our best to avoid that the next time, and we will be back next Tuesday with more glass blowing at the Art of Fire. Have a good day.